Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Estate Plan Lady Show. And my name is Yvonne Dantzler. I wanted to give you an update on last week with the elderly couple and what happened with them and their son. So there are two sides, maybe three, four, five sides to every story. I just wanted to give commentary on their side of the story. We gave you the story on the elderly couple and how they stated that 20 years ago, they bought a home and in their son's name. And at the time when they were trying to um, get the home going, the loan officer stated to them not to put the parent's name on title. And so they didn't and they don't speak English well. And, you know, they didn't understand what was going on. So we're going to move forward 20 years from there. Turns out the son uh, actually sold the home and two friends who owned a, I guess, a mortgage company or real estate company and it did for undisclosed amount. The whole point is, is that we were talking about titling and things that you own, okay? So the parents were making payments of $700 a month for the past 20 years almost. Now, we all know that your average home loan is about 30 years. It averages 30 years. You've paid that far into a loan. Shouldn't there be a loan modification attempted? So the son stated that he, this is all coming from them. The son stated that uh, he could no longer afford the payments. And that also that he was having some mental issues going on there. So I don't want to be biased. I want to go ahead and play the clip on the other side and just hear their side of it. And then we'll, we'll finish up with our side. And there are pros and cons of titling with your children, adult children or family members or anyone. You know, there's, there's definitely pros and cons. In this situation, there was no title involved. So this is kind of where the confusion is coming in. The parent's name wasn't put down at all. So this is under fair use. I just want to go ahead. It's about two minutes. We'll listen to them and then we'll go ahead and we'll come back, wrap this up and we'll be done. So here you go. Monday, we first brought you the story regarding a Fresno elderly couple who was evicted from their home by their son after they said they made monthly payments on it for nearly 20 years. The house was under the son's name. Many viewers criticized the son's actions and of those others involved in this family feud. That's when three of them decided to come forward and tell their side of the story. They were also all involved in real estate and say they were all friends of the son named Jesus. But they're accusing of a spot. And we will have that time with those that have put our name out there, you know, and we have the visual presentation in town. So we're prepared to do whatever we have to do to defend our name. And that's how I truly feel. Francisco and his wife, Laura, says there is more to the story behind why Laura purchased a home from Jesus. He finally came to me in April, the end of March. And he said, um, you know, honey, I... My house is in, um, I might lose the house. It's going through foreclosure. I haven't made the payments because I haven't been working. And I was like, wow. And I said, no, well, you know, talk to your parents, you guys, you know, let them know that you're going to sell it and that you need to start looking for another house, you know, explain to them. And he goes, they just are not cooperating with me. I've tried and tried. And I was like, wow. He goes, I'm going to just have to sell it. And he goes, can you buy it for me? He knows our her business friends. And I said, well, let me see if I'm able to, you know? So I, I told them I was able to do it. She says she wanted to clear it up that she was not given the house for free. So we did an owner to owner uh, transaction. Everyone's thinking that he signed the house over to me. No, he didn't. There was money involved and I paid US currency for it. I paid money, it was not free. All three also say they noticed Jesus was on the verge of a mental breakdown. They also say that he is dealing with a health illness and Maggie has been the caretaker. Jesus' dream and goal was to pay off the house and gifted it to his mother. Like he's done to his cars, his trucks, his furniture. He gives it all to them. As soon as he pays it off, he, he gives it to them. And I think that was the ultimate goal. 
Okay, we're going to start right, stop right there, and we're going to finish this up. So we've got their side of the story, which is I love getting at least two sides of the story and then kind of coming in the middle. In this situation, you don't have a title for the parents. So titling never occurred. It was left only in the son's name and the adult son's name and something transpired 20 years down the road. Uh, they're not mentioning if he qualified or even attempted to do a loan modification, uh, loan refinance, whatever it takes to you know, put extend the payment of the house. These mortgage companies understand, you know, things happen and they will work with you. Most of them, if you've been current or just something has happened, we just came out of a pandemic. So to end this, in this situation, the parents should have been on the title at the very beginning because at least they would have had some type of leeway. So in this situation, you can have adult children that's on title with you. You can have a brother, a sister, um, re relatives, or just business partners. It happens every day. Just know that how you title and how you run your business has a lot to do with all those scenarios. So with this being said, I wanted to give their side of the story. And I also wanted to say this, this is for commentary and fair use, that there's a couple of strange things along there. Number one, why wasn't a loan modification even mentioned instead of just outright trying to buy the home? Number two, if this person was, uh, as they stated, mentally incapacitated or showing signs of it, why are they purchasing a house from a mentally incapacitated person? Uh, the third thing is, is that why didn't they try to work with the parents and see about uh putting their name on. There's a lot of fishy things under this. We'll leave it alone. But titling is the subject of this. And just this is for educational purposes. And this is just my take on it. So anyway, with all that being said, everyone, just titling when you're going to purchase a home, just know and make sure that your titling stays with your name. If you transfer it into a living trust, uh, you still own the property. It's just in a trust name. Just make sure titling is everything. Like in this situation, these people thought they actually owned a home. All they were doing was paying a glorified mortgage or rent. And I say glorified because their name was never on anything, only in their mind and, and what they were being told, but not on paper. OK, so that's why they went on to try to get attorneys to try to see if they could get the house back. And ultimately, they stated that the attorneys were unable to help them. Well, your name wasn't on the title. You were paying rent. So with all that being said, everyone, I hope you can learn from this and have yourselves a wonderful day or evening and take care of yourselves.